So a lot of viewers have been asking me to make a video and comment about uh, the actor Ashton Kutcher going on C-SPAN, or he went in front of Congress and is talking about human trafficking and uh, sex slavery and these types of things to Congress. And if, you know, I don't want to slam him that much. He seems emotionally invested in this. If he's being sincere, of course, this is an actor. And he says that he has a software company that helps track down these pedophiles and these sex trafficking uh, groups. And if he's being sincere, then he's obviously passionate about this and put some time and effort into this. And it's better that he's saying something than nothing at all. But I have a problem with it. I have a couple of problems with this. And that is if there's two groups, at least in terms of America, well, really, globally, that's responsible for these types of things. It would be Hollywood and the American government. <laughs> and so you have maybe the two biggest perpetrators and enablers of this type of behavior and attitudes coming together and being like, oh, wow, we got to solve this problem. You know, <laughs> When you're, in fact, heavily involved and heavily responsible for this plague that suffer that children and people suffer all around the world so the first part about this and i don't think i've talked about this in a while we have a lot of new viewers on this channel is that for a number of years i worked as a counselor and a clinician i have a master's degree in counseling with sex offenders with teenage sex offenders in treatment centers sexual abuse is a depressing plague and it's far more reaching than anybody would ever know and so it's i'm sure it's gotten much worse since i left that field because of the internet and because of pornography and the internet and how pornography plays and how kids are being sexualized today and so there's a great ted talk i'll leave a link in the description box it's from a number of years ago it's this guy gary wilson and Again, people say, well, Ted's a part of the, yeah, yeah, but, but this is actually a good talk. And the guy is, does a great job about plague of internet pornography. And one of the things that he says that shouldn't surprise anybody, but it's kind of stunning, was that they were having trouble studying the effects, the negative effects of pornography on teenage boys using the internet because they didn't have a controlled group. To run any kind of experiment, you have to have users and not users. And they couldn't find one teenage boy, they couldn't find a, a group of teenage boys who were on the internet and not using pornography. So it was 100%. And so that should pretty much shock, in a sense, uh, how bad that plague is because well, here's the other piece to this. So going back to Hollywood, there was this documentary recently done by this woman, woman, Amy Berg, and it was called The Open Secret, and it was about Hollywood pedophiles, and you can watch it on YouTube. It's really depressing. And you had all these players who were managers, guys who were between the children and Hollywood, basically, and, of course, the producers and people there. And these parents are so desperate for their kids to be famous, they just willingly and happily turn their children over to these pedophiles. It's called an open secret because pretty much all the people in Hollywood know about this. And then you have all the moral degradation, not just in terms of sex, but in terms of violence, which are very stimulating. And the shock value that people are being indoctrinated with. So going back to that TED Talk with Gary Wilson, he talks about how there is a binge ne mechanism, a reward system built into the human being. And that when you come across, when animals come across, in this case like new mates, potential new mates, because there is this desire for animal life, for mammals particularly, to reproduce and to father a bloodline. And so this binge mechanism kicks in. I've recently talked about this in another video. We also have a binge mechanism for sugar and fat because sugar and fat are very rare in nature. We have them now in abundance in our modern day system. And that's why you have a lot of obesity. 
But now with pornography and abundance of cheap fat and cheap sugars, you see that people are binging all the time. This pulls people outwards away from their inner connection to God, their soul, and makes them impulsive beings that are constantly looking for the next fix because there is a very dominant reward system, a binge system in the human, in the human uh, makeup, in our biological makeup that makes us say, you know, you come across this stuff, you're supposed to devour it. And so this is what the porn industry basically relies on. And so what you have here is all of these young children growing up. So every kid on the internet is getting exposed to pornography and just the, the wide variety because they have to come up with new and exciting things. They have to come up with things that are different because of this binge mechanism, something that's new. And so these kids are getting exposed to a lot of graphic, disturbing pornography. Most of it's unnatural, and there's no love there. They're not watching two people who are in love. They're not watching two people that are going to be parents and raise a family, where sex plays a healthy and natural role in somebody's life. And you have all of these men and all these young men who are this is how they're being sexualized and women too there's all these women watching this pornography and they're being also women are being sexualized to these unrealistic romantic chick flicks so they get these two-way kind of un, they're just not natural it's not how natural couples have to deal with problems and all these things and so when you bring these people together these young people they are just bored and they don't are not satisfied by a natural, loving, sexual relationship that would happen between, uh, you know, a normal couple. And I've talked about this before in getting back to Ashton Kutcher in Hollywood. When people are, when a child grows up, it formulates its internal world, its ego, it's how it identifies with itself, not just its ego, because it's partially to do with one's soul as well. But you have an internal world. And it used to be that Kids would grow up sitting with their elders around a campfire in some, you know, aboriginal type setup or in, in terms of some, you know, pioneers and these people, farmers. And they would sit around with their family, maybe they'd play some music, and they would hear stories. And they would, these stories would become who they are as human beings. And we've replaced that with TV and movies and all these types of things. And so we get our internal world, our moral compass, what we think is right and wrong from basically these pedophiles, these people who are sexual deviants in one way or another, immoral people, and not just with sex, but with violence. They'll do anything, make money, and degrade the human culture. There's a, there's a level of just these people are like dead inside, connected to negative entities and things like this. And, you know, I've talked about this in the past. With all these kids that I work with and people I've talked to since then, when they talked about their abuser, the abuser was often a loved one and some kind of negative entity. There was some sort of switch like a Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde type switch that would come over their abuser. And this is something that I think people need to think about because it was like the abuser became another person or there was another essence in them. Of so, This was something that I was shocked to kind of hear but I heard it over and over again because I didn't really think about or believe in demonic energy or negative energy. But it was just from hearing story after story of something coming over their abuser, like there was just this negative presence. They would feel different. Their energy would feel differently. And so this is where a lot of this stuff comes from. And you have all these Hollywood people, you know, they're drug addicts and they're living these decadent lifestyles. And they just have no connection to what's natural and normal anymore. And they're the people in charge of feeding your children and you as you grew up with your internal makeup through stories, the movies and TV shows. And they are also boxed in because, and now it's even more so with the internet, is that when your work is with the external world and sensory stimulation, when your job is to provide sensory stimulation for people, and this is you know the lower level of emotions I've talked about, things that to do with your gut, 
and your primal urges and your base level binge mechanism and all of these things that are of a lower nature, you have to come up with new and more exciting, whether it be violence or whether it be sexual activity, whatever it is, the pornography industry, the movie industry, whatever it is, you see this on YouTube and the internet, you have to push the envelope because what you did yesterday has now become normal and people are used to it. and They need to be excited. And they're dead inside. They want their ad adrenaline glands to, you know, they want to be stimulated. And so their brain needs something new. It hasn't seen before. So things have become more graphic and more degraded. And then it's much harder to get excited by normal life. So you have people that go, you know, you work your mundane jobs. Or you go, some of these things can be rewarding. And you're in your normal type relationships. And they're nothing like what you see in the movies. There's nothing, you know, the sex isn't like they see in pornography and all these things. And so it becomes bland to them. Real life becomes bland, of course, now with video games and all this. And you see kids more and more withdrawing into these uh, fantasy worlds. Also, they lack the, people lack the physical stamina and the courage and the things to go out and have real adventures because it's safe. The internet is safe. Their video games are safe. So they can get this sort of stimulation without any personal risk and all of it. And Hollywood and the, you know, these people have provided this. And of course, we know about the decadent and immoral type activities of our politicians who are all involved with this. And they all think it's okay because they're all, they have the money and they have the ability to go out and do more risky, risque things and get into this really decadent, you know, pedophilia or whatever it might be, S&M and these types of things because they're like dead inside. And when people aren't in connected with their hearts and they don't, there's very few people that are in love anymore. And you have all these husbands and they're watching porn and they come be with their wives, but they're just thinking about the porn they just watched. I mean, how many women suffer this and, and think about this and, and deal with this type of thing? And the women too, I guess. They simply don't love each other anymore. People don't know how to love. They can't feel love. And so it, this idea where the love between them would grow and their hearts would be involved. And the other thing that people don't know is that both of the, the male and the female uh, sexual organs are connected to the heart. That Viagra was a heart medication. It was supposed to be to help, well, I forget what it was but it was designed to be a heart medication and it had this side effect and then it became, you know, something else. And that when people love their, their capacity to love and their love for their spouse grows, their sexual attraction grows in a spiritual way and it elevates this activity beyond some mundane, lower level type of a physical expression to a higher level expression that involves the heart and God and then there's this idea that children come through this process of a loving relationship between the couple where God is involved. And the child born in this way have so many advantages because they come into this world in love. But that's something that just is such a rare occurrence nowadays. Exploitation of the human beings because that's what's happened in the advertising industry and through Hollywood and whatever. They've made it to be like... People are constantly thinking about sex and using it as a weapon against them. Not just sex, but sugar and all these binge type of things. And so that you're sensory stimulated all the time and they're using this as a way to motivate you and control all of us. And so it starts there. It starts with Congress and it starts with Hollywood. I, Ashton Kutcher was talking about these you know, worldwide problems and the dark web and all these things. It starts in Hollywood. You see this now with Disney. They're adding a gay character and all these Hollywood, you know, all these people that are already more immoral and not the kind of people that should be leaders of morality and ethics and training you how to be a real natural human being are pushing this gender fluid type things and all of it. I mean, they have these fake stage celebrity couples and then you have the producers and the managers that are all deviant people and pedophiles, you know, all these things. It's like this horribly decadent uh, hell-like party going on there. And then these people are the trainers. They're the people that 
are feeding everybody their internal existence and telling people this is what we're supposed to be like. They're pushing their agenda on everybody else. Of course, this comes from a controlling system of bankers and rich people that are involved in secret societies and these rituals. And so it's just a big mess and it's all trickling down to the average people. And then Ashton Kutcher and these people say, oh yeah, we got to go out and we got to catch these guys and we got to, you know, fix the system through law enforcement and all these types of things. It's always the solution. And the people always are proposing the solution. It starts within your heart. It starts within you, in your internal system. You get connected to God. I talk about this quite specifically. You meditate and connect to God. You find your soul's path and you become a better person. You, the best possible person that's inside you, you cultivate that, which can be done easily or at least with some effort. In the modern day system and these Hollywood movies are, are designed to pull out your lowest level person. Uh, you operating on your lowest vibratory condition, your lowest vibratory field. But also within you is your soul's path, connection to God, God's vision for you. And within that you can connect to the, you know, the big self. There's the small self, the ego, and there's the big self, your soul and your soul's path. And you can elevate your consciousness and these types of things. It's difficult in the world the way it is, but it, any kind of effort makes the world a better place. No matter where you start off from, if you just get a little bit better and you connect to God's love, if you just feel God's love occasionally, it changes the world around you and it changes you as an individual. But if you keep on engaging in these types of activities and you get farther and farther away, you just keep on dying a slow death, disconnected from God, and then you just become this like robotic animaton that just reacts to your base level sort of emotions, your base level primal instincts, and you're just engaging in the next impulsive type fix that you're getting, either through sexual activity or through your foods and these types of things. We live through our guts and through our reproductive systems, and there's no elevation, there's no higher consciousness. And one more thing to add, I think 100% of women are either sexually abused or in some way sexually harassed in their life. They experience feeling unsafe or violated sexually at some point in their life. So you combine that with young men who are 100% involved in watching porn, and what do you got there? I mean, you have a lot of women who are, you know, they have some trauma associated with this, and then men who have been brought to this dark demonic world where they are sexualized and they have this sexual energy connected to these dark forces. So this is something for all of us to consider. And again, you can't fix the problem from the outside. <laughs> this is an internal problem and everyone's got to deal with this on a personal level. But we have to change the rhetoric. People have to aspire to something that's more than just these sensory stimulation type activities that we see saturating our modern day system and it comes through the Hollywood beast. I hope that everyone will think about this. This is Paul Romano reporting from the apocalypse and everybody have a blessed day.